This is a second guide to programming the Draybank MIDI controller using the Draybank config editor. The first part covered basic editor operation and control change or CC messages for a microcorg. This one uses a more complex message called NRPN and both the microcorg and Novation Supernova use different variants of these so I'll show both. I'll start with the Supernova using similar functions as before mix levels, wave shape, coarse and fine tune, but this time for all three oscillators, just to show what I would have liked on the Supernova front panel instead of a single knob. Now as before, I'll use both the MIDI spec and monitor methods to deduce the MIDI messages required. Here's the Supernova spec. It's laid out differently to the microcorg, but this page shows the basic controller messages we've seen before. Now, as suspected, they perform different functions on this synth, but they're used in exactly the same way in the editor. And here we've got the controller numbers for fine tune and mix level for all three oscillators, so I'll add these now. I'll do oscillator 1 mix level first, so we can say label mix 1, bank number 1, knob number 1, function cc and the cc number is 28 and we'll put a comment osc1 mix level I'll just copy and paste and do the others mix 2, mix 3 obs 2 and 3 and the cc numbers are 29 and 33 I've done the fine-tuned ones earlier, so I'll just paste those in. Now I've assigned knob numbers similar to before, so we can just click Labels to check the layout. And there we are, we're going to have three columns. Oscillator 1 will be this one, Oscillator 2, Oscillator 3. Now don't forget you can click All at any time to send the definitions to the Draybank for testing. And if you just want to send a few of them, Highlight them, or select them first, then click Cell. Now these buttons only affect the knobs that you send. All the others in the Dray Bank remain unchanged. So if you want to clear a definition so the knob has no effect when it's turned, there's another function called Off. These are the details. So we could just type Bank 1, knob number 20, say, function off. My apologies for the choice of terminology but that's just how it came out. No offence intended. Okay now let's look at the oscillator course tune in semitones. In the spec this section is headed NRPN. So what does this mean? Now you've probably noticed the basic controller numbers go from 0 to 127. That makes 128 different controllers. But this synth has page after page of functions, way more than 128, so how is it done? And the trick is to treat certain controller numbers as part of a group and combine their numbers together to get larger numbers. Now this is oversimplifying, but the details are not necessary for using the editor. All you need to know is that certain controller numbers are used in groups. Now some of these are standardised and registered with the MIDI authority, and these are called Registered Parameter Numbers, or RPN for short. Now, others are not standardised and are used any way the synth designer chooses. And these are called Non-Registered Parameter Numbers, or NRPN. Now the spec for this supernova model is a bit tricky to follow at first sight. I think they improved it later on. But it's much easier to see how these messages work if we switch to the monitor method. So connect the supernova MIDI output to the computer's input and select it from the MIDI in list. In the monitor section, untick everything except controllers. Now on the supernova, change the semitone value for oscillator 1 and watch the monitor. Now if nothing appears, just check the supernova is set up to output controller messages. Now this may have been disabled, 
So if necessary, press global, page up or down to display the controller's TX option, then nudge as required to set this to on. And by the way, for any microcorg users, there's a similar enable disable function I forgot to mention in the previous video. So if you don't see any control change messages in the monitor, press shift and four, and the display will show FLT for filter, then turn knob two to enable control changes. And the display should show C-E, then press four to exit. Back on the supernova, as you change the semitone tuning, you should see the messages appear in groups of two. You get controller number 98, followed by controller number 6. Now look at the start of each line. Again, you don't need to understand these hex values. Just look for patterns and see which ones remain static and which ones change as you turn the knob. Then compare these with the functions in the editor. Now these NRPN functions look promising as they have 62 and 06 in the pattern. This is what we're looking for. And the rotation term, RR, appears next to the 06. And that's what we see, 06, and a value which seems to change as we turn the knob. Now the square brackets indicate other groupings for this type of message. And you may see these with other synths. In fact, I'll show an example later with the microcorg. Now, as usual, don't panic about which one of these to use. Just click either of the question mark buttons and you'll see all the variations in detail. These are the variations. There's one there, one there, one there, and so on. And this is the one that seems to match our pattern best. We have the first part, which is 62, followed by something called LSB. And this stands for least significant byte, but we don't care as all we want is its value. Now in the monitor, all the 62s are followed by zero. So LSB is zero. Now the second part matches 06, followed by the rotation range value, which changes as the knob rotates. And here we can see the 062D, 062E, 062F. So this is the one we want, and the line above shows what we need to type. I have label semitone for oscillator 1, bank 1, knob number 33. By the way, the space is optional between the prefix and the number. Function nrpn msb. Now just be careful of the spelling because there's another one called nrpn lsb but you can always copy and paste from the help screens. We now need a parameter called ls for lsb and as we saw the value in our case is zero. And that's the hard bit done. All we need to do is finish off by confirming the range of values now, as we saw before, if you don't specify a range, the editor defaults to 0 to 127 in steps of 1. But from the monitor, you can see that the values go from 45 up to 69. So we need to override the default by adding a range parameter, which, as we saw before, was dash RA for range. And just type it as you say it, 45 to 69 comma one. With the microcorg there were no range issues as the whole range was dedicated to the semitone function. But if you look at the supernova spec you'll see the range is split across different functions. And this means you'll get some pretty bizarre effects if you map 0 to 127 onto a single knob. That's not to say don't try it but I accept no responsibility. So that's a course tune done. Oscillators 2 and 3 are similar but just use different ranges. So we end up with this. We can click labels to check the layout again. And there we are, this is the course tune for the three oscillators. Now hopefully if you go back to the MIDI spec for the supernova, the heading should now make more sense. The semitone page mentions NRPN0 
and the CC6 values. So we can see the 0 corresponds to our LSB value and CC6 corresponds to the 06 controller number which we use to match the function pattern. So you should now be able to go to any page in this spec such as the arpeggiator and LFO functions and the heading here says NRPN 110 and CC6 values and these are programmed just the same way but using the parameter dash LS 110. OK, let's go on to the wave shapes. We'll clear the monitor. Now if you cycle through the three main wave shapes on the supernova, square, saw and special, you'll see messages in groups of two as before. Now everything else is the same as before, except the values are 0, 1 and 4. So this one should be relatively easy. I'll just paste this one in from an earlier one. We've got dash ls0 and the range is 0 to 4 in steps of 1. So repeating this for the other two oscillators, we get this. Now before we test this out, I'll just show the NRPN variation used by the microcorg for its arpeggiator control. I've just connected the microcorg to the MIDI monitor. I'll clear the log and I'll press the microcorg arpeggiator on off button. Now this time you can see the messages appear in groups of three. Now they still match the NRPN functions, but this time there's the extra 63 message. If we expand the functions as before, we can see that these correspond to this type of message. In this case there's another parameter called MSB, or most significant byte, and in our case it's zero, but you need to specify this as a parameter, dash MS zero. The LSB value is two this time. The rotation range is still next to the 06, and it has two values not for off and 127 for on. So we can write this I just said bank 2 just to be different knob number 1 function nrpn msb and it's dash ms0 and dash ls2 and the default range of 0 to 127 is okay in this case because the microcorg spec says it treats 0 to 63 or well, the first half of that range as off, and 64 to 127 as on. Now we'll just do one more for the arpeggiator range, and this one has four values corresponding to one octave, two octaves, three octaves, and four octaves. And here we can see the four groups in the monitor. And this time the LSB value is 3, and the rotation range goes from 0 to 3. So these would appear in the definitions area, something like this. There's our function, ms0, ls3, and our range. Now just a quick point about hexadecimal numbers. Now the editor can also handle these. You can prefix the number by an x, but they are a scary topic if you've never seen them before. So I've tried to use decimal numbers wherever possible. Now I've had to use hex numbers in the pattern matching method as it only makes sense in that format but you still don't need to understand them in order to match patterns. But if you do find you need to convert from one to the other just click calc for calculator and scroll down. This is the decimal column, this is the hex column. All the highlighted items in a row are equivalent. So there we can see our controller number 98 we referred to is hexadecimal 62. OK, that's it for now. I'll just get rid of these two and we'll test them out. So thanks for watching.